Hey traders, welcome back to another daily profit and loss recap video. Today is Monday, July 31st. I just finished up trading for the morning and I was able to bring my win streak up to 12 days, locking in $1,119 in profits. I had one trade only today that is in the stock TUP and we're going to break down my entry points, my exit points, as well as my thought process behind this trade here in this video. So let's get right into it with TUP. The reason that this was on my radar in the first place is because we can see you know, over the past week or so, this has been in a very strong uptrend. It went from about 60 cents or so a couple of weeks ago up to a high so far today of $4.74. Um, you know, so just consistently squeezing out short sellers, making new highs. And the price action on Thursday and Friday of last week in particular is the reason that this was on my radar today on Monday for a continuation to new highs. We can see on Thursday we get this big gap and go from the previous day's close. And uh, on Friday, then we get another gap up. At this point in time, I was expecting this to be a bigger pullback than it was, or even the start of a sell off to the downside. But from that gap up, there is a small pullback underneath the previous day's close that immediately gets bought right back up. Um, so, what that looks like on the shorter term time frame here is the morning pullback. Later on in the afternoon on Friday, it starts to squeeze back up and it has a relatively strong close ending up closing the day once again above the previous day's close. Um, so just a lot of continued strength, even when this was, in theory, going to be a really good opportunity for a pullback to the downside, just because of how overbought it was at the time and because there was, once again, another gap up. Uh, but again, this was able to recover very nicely. So I decided to take a position in it this morning, and I posted an alert to the Market Master Group. I said that I'm taking a starter position in TUP into this morning pullback, liking the odds of a reversal back to the 350 area based on the volume profile. I'd like to get a chance to add in the low threes and I'll be using the 280s for risk management if it's not able to start curling back up. So at the time it was trading at about $3.21. And I want to kind of just explain what I meant by, you know, using the volume profile in this case. So for reference, the regular volume, of course, is going to be these volume bars that we have at the bottom of our chart. Um, on thinkorswim they are blue these volume bars of course tell us when there is a significant amount of volume traded or when there is high relative volume low relative volume and you can compare from candle to candle no matter what time frame it is that volume to different periods of time and obviously there are tons of uses and that provides a lot of value in itself but the volume profile also commonly known as the volume shelf depending on what trading platform you're using is kind of just a different way to look at volume because in this case, it kind of flips it on its side and tells you the price levels where there is significant amounts of volume traded. These high volume areas can often become levels of support and resistance. So this morning when we saw that TUP was opening up above a high volume area on the volume profile, um, right at about $3 per share, that's why I was comfortable buying into this initial morning pullback. I then added some shares as it started to bounce back up above the VWAP and added once again the second time that it started to pick back up above the VWAP and I ended up with a total of 3,000 shares. My average cost was right at about the VWAP at $3.26 and I locked in a portion of my profits into this 350 area because we can see beforehand that area was acting as a bit of resistance um, in the pre-market session as well as at the market open and then finally it starts to squeeze back through that 350 area I lock in the rest of my profits right around 370. The reason for that is because down here on the daily chart, we can see the high from Thursday's price action. Um, you know, this big high volume day where there's this big gap and go was $3.75. So naturally, that's going to be a bit of a resistance area. And even if it's not my entire position, I always like to lock in a portion of my profits into key levels of resistance just in case those levels hold and in case we get a big rejection from that area. So when it was all said and done, I locked in $1,119 in profits on this trade. Um, so it was a really solid stress-free trade. Didn't even get close to my risk level, but we can see it did end up having a much bigger run so far later in the morning. I'm not necessarily disappointed with where I sold my initial position because like I mentioned, I always like to lock in some profits into resistance, but I should have been paying a bit more attention to it right away after I sold. Uh, because we see there is a bit of a triple bottom that forms right here, um, right at about $3.60 above the VWAP. And from there, it starts to break back out to new highs. 
there was definitely an opportunity to get back in there for either a dip buy into this triple bottom or even a breakout trade as it was pushing up to new highs with high relative volume. And in doing so, in theory, I could have pretty easily doubled my profits that I made for my initial trade on this. But all in all, it was a solid stress-free trade. Like I mentioned, we had some traders kill it with this one in chat as well. So that was my only trade today. I hit my goal of $1,000. But very quickly, I also do want to just break down one of the trades that I almost got into in one of the trades that I posted in the group. And that was with the stock ALLR. ALLR, as we can see, was gapping up here in pre-market. What I posted was that this was going to be a really high probability short setup. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you're newer to trading, short selling is when you can actually profit from a stock going down. And yeah, with ALLR, I posted this morning that it was looking like a high probability short setup into the gap up this morning, given this stock's history, which I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment. And there was a great chance as it was trading at the time at $3.33 that this could fade back down to $3 or lower, which for a short position would be a really solid profitable trade. So when I mentioned a stock's history, um, you know, history obviously doesn't 100% of the time repeat itself, but a lot of times in the stock market, if a certain stock has a history of spiking up or gapping up and then coming straight back down, that history does tend to repeat itself. And that's often because the stock is, you know, just very fundamentally weak or there's a lot of history of dilution, reverse splits, and so on and so forth. Uh, so with ALLR, for example, this was kind of fitting into that category. Every time there's a gap up or every time there is a big spike up, you can see all of these long upper wicks and all of these red candles. The price immediately comes straight back down and it is generally going to be very weak from that spike or gap up. So that being said, here in pre-market, we were seeing that it had this nice spike up, but it was starting to show some weakness, forming some lower highs, failing to get back above the VWAP in the pre-market session. And that's why I posted that this was a really good opportunity to short sell at the market open. And we can see it then pushes briefly into the VWAP there at the market open. It immediately gets rejected back down, consolidates for a bit, and then starts to break down and has been fading ever since. So I wanted to mention this because even if you aren't someone that short sells, I know a lot of traders in our group are just focused on long trades, but knowing what makes a good short opportunity can also be very valuable as a long bias trader as well. And the reason for that is because if you were looking for a long opportunity, or a gap and go with the stock ALLR, getting into a long trade at the market open today would have resulted in a loss. And if you would have just used the information that we just talked about given this stock's history, again, even if you don't short sell, you would have known to avoid this on the long side because of how high probability it was that it was going to come straight back down. All right, so I just wanted to share that as well, but those were my main focuses for the day. Again, I locked in $1,119 in profits with my one trade in TUP. So I hope that you found some value in this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you want to hear about these stocks that I'm trading in real time, as well as work with our team of traders, get access to our day trade and swing trade alerts, our detailed trade plans, our live custom scanner streams, and so on and so forth. All of that can be found in the Market Master Group. There's going to be a link down below in the description for you to get signed up. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and good luck with your trading.